You can always be better. Customers have a divine discontent and they teach you if you listen to customers. When I'm 80, now 90, I, have, I want to have minimized the number of regrets that I have in my life. You have to always be leaning into the future. If you're, if you're leaning away from the future, the future is going to win every time. Need motivation? What's your top 10 with Believe Nation? Top 10, I got a top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. All my life, like nine and nine. For my top 10, top 10, top 10, nine and nine. This one's for my top 10. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because chances are you are the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Jeff Bezos, and my take on his top 10 rules to success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one, minimize regrets. When I'm 80, now 90, I, I want to have minimized the number of regrets that I have in my life. And most of our regrets right. are acts of omission. They're things we didn't try. It's the path untraveled. Um, those are the things that haunt us. Rule number two, think long term. What do you say to employees when you ha obviously have some traders in the stock who are not happy and suddenly the stock is down 25% after a quarter? Well, I, so for, well, since 1997, at almost every all-hands meeting, we have two all-hands meetings a year, at almost every all-hands meeting, I remind employees that you know, if the stock is up 10% this month, don't feel 10% smarter, because when the stock is down 10% some month, you're gonna have to feel 10% dumber, and it's not gonna feel as good. And so, it's, you know, ownership, is uh, we give most of our compensation uh, is is done in terms of uh, stock compensation, and uh, uh, and part and parcel with ownership is a mentality of of long term thinking. You know, you owners think longer term than renters do. So I have a friend who rented his house to some tenants, and instead of getting a Christmas tree stand at Christmas, they just nailed the Christmas tree into the hardwood floors <laughs> of the house. No owner would ever do that, and um, but sometimes they're, no, that's a bad tenant. You know, they're good good tenants, but that's a bad tenant, and it's because you know this is the same old thing about you know nobody ever washed a rental car, and um, it, it, you know, you take better care of the things that you own, and and uh, uh, but but one of the responsibilities of ownership, and de definitely deep inside the Amazon culture is to think about the fundamentals of the business and not the daily fluctuations in the stock price. It's not, there's no information in it. Rule number three, listen to your customers. You shop on Amazon, yeah. uh, and uh, if you have something, the service you don't like, yeah. so do you just pick up the phone, call your team of 700,000 people, and tell them, I don't like this, change this, or You know what I do? So, um, I don't do this, it doesn't happen that often, but if I get a delivery that I don't like, maybe I don't like the way it's packaged or something, we have regular meetings of the senior executive team, and I bring the box to the meeting. And when I walk in, I haven't done this in a while, it's been a while, but when I bring in a box, everybody in the room is like, oh no, he's bringing in a box, because it's always some problem. But really, the way I get feedback is, to, is primarily from my email address is very well known and I keep it well known. And I get hundreds and hundreds of emails every day from customers and they always have something interesting to say when something goes wrong. Because we have hundreds of millions of customers around the world and no matter how good we are, we can still be better. You can always be better. Customers have a divine discontent and they teach you if you listen to customers. So we watch for that and we see patterns and we can find places where it's not working, something's going wrong, and that's really how I get the feedback is from customer input. Uh, and often, you know, in all caps, angry, you ruined my child's birthday because the gift didn't show up on time. And we take that and what you really want to do is you take that, it's an anecdote, it's a single example, but you need to find the root cause what went wrong deep inside the system? How did this happen? Because then you can fix it for everyone. 
so that that particular problem will never happen again. You don't just fix the symptom, you have to fix the root cause. And that's been the secret to our operational success for 20 years. Rule number four, empower others. What I want to achieve with Blue Origin is to build the heavy lifting infrastructure that allows for the kind of dynamic entrepreneurial explosion of thousands of companies in space that I have witnessed over the last 21 years on the internet. So when I think about the founding of Amazon.com, it, it only could work, so it take you back to 1995, July 1995, we open our doors. And this is a 10-person company. I'm driving the packages to the post office myself. And we, had, we were sitting on a bunch of heavy lifting infrastructure. Otherwise, a tiny company could never have started Amazon.com. You couldn't do it. For example, there was already a gigantic logistics network called the U.S. Postal Service and UPS and FedEx. That would have been tens of billions, actually hundreds of billions of dollars of capital that you would have had to have laid out if you had to build a logistics network. We didn't have to do that. It existed. That heavy lifting was already done. Um, the, the, the Internet itself was sitting on top of, at that time, uh, uh, the long-distance phone network. Again, tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars of capital put in place for long-distance phone calls, but repurposed for the Internet. Um, payment system. There was already a payment system. We didn't have to do that. It was called the credit card, and it had been initially put in place for travelers, mm. and so on and so on. And you can go through. And what we were able to do is take all of that heavy lifting infra infrastructure and kind of reassemble it in a new way and do something new and inventive with it. And that's one lens through which you can view the founding of Amazon.com. In space today, that is impossible. On the internet today, you know, two kids in their dorm room can reinvent an industry. That's how, how, uh, how it could, because you don't, you, the heavy lifting infrastructure is in place for that. Today, two kids in their dorm room can't do anything interesting in space. You know, you could build a CubeSat. There's not that much interesting about CubeSats. <laughs> and the, um, it'll, it, that may change, but right now, there's just, you, you need, there, there are certain laws of physics and certain things you need size for, and th things need to be big. We need to be able to put big things in space at low cost. And so if I'm 80 years old and I can say to myself that Blue Origin did the heavy lifting you know, I'm using my Amazon winnings mm -hmm. to do a new piece of heavy lifting infrastructure, um, uh, uh, which is low cost access to space. The vehicles have to be reusable. You can't throw them away. Throw away space vehicles every time, you're never going to lower the cost. So we're trying to lower the price of admission into space so that thousands of entrepreneurs can then do amazing, surprising things. Nobody in 1995, so that much just nobody in 95 predicted travel. Snapchat. Right. You know, it's like, I can't predict for you what amazing entrepreneurs, brilliant, amazing entrepreneurs will do in space, but I know if I give them low cost access to space, some brilliant, you know, 22 year old is gonna figure it out. It's one of those things about what companies get sustainable. It's those that provide platforms upon which others can build. If you, Amazon if does you empower it, does others, it, you. empower others to do things. So AWS is like that. Kindle Direct Publishing is like that. Our third-party selling business is like that. Fulfillment by Amazon is like that. Every time you figure out some way of providing tools and services that empower other people to deploy their creativity, you're really onto something. Also, if you wanna have more self-belief and more self-confidence, I've created a special free program where every day for the next 254 days, I will send you an unlisted video to help you boost your self-belief and self-confidence. The link to join for free is in the description below. If everything has to work in two to three years, then that limits what you can do. The stress primarily comes from not taking action for me, I've seen small things get big, and it's part of this day one mentality. I like treating things as if, if they're small. Rule number five, build a strong company culture. My opinion is that um, I can do some things that Amazon, uh, uh, that are, would be hard for other people to do only because of my history with the company. And um, my, as the company has grown, of course, my job has changed very much, and um, it has. Uh, my main job today is I'm kind of the, 
I, I, I work hard at helping to maintain the culture. Um, you know, a culture of high standards, of operational excellence, of, uh, you know, of inventiveness, of willingness to fail, uh, willingness to make bold experiments. I'm the, I'm, 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 you know, I'm the guy, I'm the counterbalance to the institutional no who can say yes. Um, but I won't, you know, I'm not going to be here forever. Amazon is a really, uh, the, many of the traits that make Amazon unusual are now deeply ingrained in the culture. In fact, if I wanted to change them, I couldn't. If I decided tomorrow that I wish Amazon did less pioneering and more close following, I couldn't do it. The culture is, um, is you know, cultures are self-reinforcing, and that's a good thing. Um, you know, the, the, the people who come to the company, we get sometimes people come to the company and. They can't. They find Amazon very boring because we don't have enough, you know, competitive zeal. You know, we don't wake up. Our, some annual planning processes and, so, and some companies literally start with who are our three biggest enemies, and then you know, here's how we're going to hold them at bay or defeat them. And our, we don't have such a list at Amazon. It's not how our annual planning process works. And so, but if you're on the other hand, if you're the kind of person who gets up in the morning and says in the shower time, you know. What can we invent for customers, and what can we do differently, and how can we improve that experience, and so on, and so on? Then you know, then it's going to be a playground. Is there? I still run into work, by the way. I, I took my family on vacation to uh, France. My wife's extended family. There were about twenty of us, and we had an unbelievably good time. Great food, everything. We were there for a week. I got back to Seattle, and I ran into the office. I'm having so much fun. Rule number six: Lean into the future. As number one on the list, we were talking to Steve Case yesterday, and he had been number one, and a couple of years later, he was not on the list. Well, what you're could, making me really nervous. No, now. no, no, don't be nervous. Just tell me what could happen that would do that to you and Amazon, and how do you prevent that? Do you worry it could all come unraveled? Well, I kind of have this, this experience kind of already happened to me, because uh, you put me on the cover of Time Magazine as Person of the Year in 1999, and about a year later, the internet bubble burst. I think Amazon stock went from $113 a share to six or something like that. So these you things know, happen. When the thing for companies is you need to be um, if you, nimble and robust. So you need to be able to take a punch, uh, and you also need to be quick and, 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 and innovative and, and doing new things at a high speed. That's, that's the best defense against the future. And you have to always be leaning into the future. If you're, if you're leaning away from the future, the future is going to win every time. Never, ever, ever lean away from the future. Rule number seven, experiment. To be innovative, you have to experiment. If you want to have more invention, you need to do more experiments per week, per month, per year, per decade. It's that simple. You, you cannot invent without experimenting. And here's the other thing about experiments, lots of them fail. If you know it's gonna work in advance, it is not an experiment. <laughs> and what happens in big organizations, that Amazon's a big organization now too, the Air Force is a big organization, is that we start to confuse experimentation with operational excellence. So, we, you know, operational excellence is one of our four key principles at Amazon. We're building a fulfillment center. We've built over 150 large fulfillment centers around the world now. We know how to do that. That is not an experiment. If we build the 151st fulfillment center and screw it up, that's just a failure. That's not the kind of failure we're seeking. We want failures where we're trying to do something new, untested, never proven. That's a real experiment, and they come in all scale sizes. Rule number eight, focus on customer obsession. There's your completely massive and globally dominant commerce business, first party and third party. There is AWS, Amazon Web Services, which came out of nowhere and is now massive. You're in the hardware business, including Echo and Kindle and, and the phone, grocery delivery, payments, TV shows, you're now making TV shows, advertising. Jeff, how can you possibly do Henry, all of that? Henry, you're exhausting me. How can you possibly do all of that um, and do it okay? Even okay, the, let alone good. 
So I think one way to think about this is what are you really focusing on? So, um, you know, I'm focusing on those things that I think make Amazon unusual. Uh, uh, genuine customer obsession. So like every single thing you just mentioned, when, you know, when our senior executives sit down and review those programs, they're looking for customer obsession. Rule number nine, diversify. The question was, um, why, uh, why did we expand into things like electronics, tools, and kitchen since those businesses are not today profitable? Um, and the answer is that, um, well, uh, that it increases our addressable market size so we can ultimately build a much larger company by entering into those new product categories. And, and second, um, while it's true that those new categories, which are only three years old, and by the way, Electronics Tools and Kitchen is now a $600 million business at Amazon.com, which makes it one of the largest, on a, in a, on a standalone basis, it's probably in the top four or five e-commerce companies anywhere in the world. Um, so that business is growing and growing very rapidly. Um, and it has a, one of the big advantages it has, it has a huge audience of early adopters, which is why companies like Segway choose us as the exclusive launch platform for products like that, because really early adopters are the kind of people who buy stuff like this. Um, so it's, uh, uh, but that business ultimately will be, electronics in particular, in my opinion, will be our largest, most profitable business one day. When you start a new business, there are certain fixed costs that come along with starting that business. And then the business has to reach enough scale so that the profit from the business, the variable profit, can cover those fixed costs. There's no sidestepping that, and it's just a simple investment uh, issue. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip, is have fun. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and what is your specific plan of action for the next week? When you just watch a video and get motivated by it, you have a 35% chance of following through. But when you get motivated and then create a specific plan of action, you have a 91% chance of following through. That's what we do here at Believe Nation. We get motivated, but then we do something about it. And when you commit to other people, you increase your chances even further of following through. So what was your biggest takeaway from this video? And then what is your plan of action around for this week? Put it down in the comments below because I want to celebrate you. The best advice I can give somebody is do something that you think is interesting and let the waves catch you. You know, something that I see people do, which I don't think is a, is a good idea, is they try to chase the current thing. I saw this so much in 1997 and 1998, 1999, with respect to the internet. There were, you know, in 94 and 95 and 96 and 97, the, mostly the people who were, you know, the kind of the earlier you get, the more true this is, but you know, the people who were sort of looking at this space and starting companies were genuinely interested in it. They thought it was really cool. Um, by the time you got to 1999, like doctors were stopping, you know, like, screw that doctor thing. I'm gonna start a dot-com company. You know, and so um, that really made no sense whatsoever. You know, people were sort of abandoning the things they were genuinely interested in, trying to catch a wave. And whenever you try to catch a wave, you're almost always too late. Um, 
So it's, it's better to just, I mean, if you're paddling after it, you basically have to wait in place and let it come to you. Hey, if you want more top 10 rules videos, they are no longer on this channel. I have a dedicated brand new channel just for them. If you wanna check it out, go subscribe. The link is right there next to me. Lots of great content. Go there, go check it out. <laughs> Continue to believe and I'll see you there.